The movie opens with 12-year-old Connor, played by Louis McDougall, standing on the edge of a cliff, desperately holding on to his mother as she teeters on the brink of an abyss. Eventually, he lets go, only to wake up from what appears to be a recurring nightmare. The following morning, he quietly enters his mother's bedroom to find her sleeping. Taking charge, he prepares breakfast. His mom, Felicity Jones, joins him, revealing the physical toll of her battle with cancer, she has no hair. Connor informs her that he has completed his chores. She, in turn, mentions a new round of chemotherapy and the arrival of Connor's grandmother to ease his morning routine. Disappointed, Connor questions how long his grandmother will stay, and his mom assures him it will be just a few days. At school, Connor becomes the target of a fellow student's hostile stares, leading to a physical assault in the schoolyard later on, witnessed by the bully's friends. That night, Connor drifts off to sleep, and at the stroke of midnight, a voice echoes, calling out his name. The towering yew tree outside his window transforms into a colossal tree monster, voiced by Liam Neeson. Despite Connor's dismissive attitude, the monster whisks him away, declaring that he will share three stories, and in return, Connor must reveal his own truth, the hidden and feared reality he dreams of. Connor finds himself back in his room, covered in leaves, realizing it wasn't a mere dream. The next morning, Connor's grandmother, Sigourney Weaver, arrives, equipped with wigs for his mom. During a tense encounter in the kitchen, she condescends to Connor, hinting at the need for a serious discussion about him moving in with her. That night, as Connor awaits the monster's visit, it doesn't materialize. Instead, Connor sees the monster outside his window, ready to narrate the first tale. The animated story unfolds in a happy kingdom with a king who loses all his sons to battles with giants or dragons. The sole heir, a beloved prince, defies the queen's wishes, eloping with a farmer's daughter. Under a yew tree, now the monster, tragedy befalls the couple, leading to the queen being accused of murder. The monster reveals that he saved the queen and questions the blurred lines between good and bad in the story. Connor, frustrated, seeks a solution for his grandma, but the monster insists that the real threat isn't her. The following day, Connor faces bullying at school and upon returning home, learns that his mother's health is deteriorating, prompting his father's return from America. Connor's mom, wearing a wig, delicately discusses her failing treatments and the need for a different approach. Connor now resides with his grandmother in her home. She shares the story of their family's heirloom, an antique grandfather clock passed down through generations, and explicitly instructs him not to touch it. Left alone in her meticulously tidy house, Connor's father visits, and they dine out. Connor reassures his father that his mother will be fine due to a new medication. During the conversation, Connor emphasizes that his sister is his half-sister. His father informs him that she is eager to meet him, and he is arranging for Connor to visit L.A., sparking Connor's excitement. However, Connor discovers it's only for Christmas, disappointing him as he yearns for his own space and room, expressing his dissatisfaction with his grandmother's house. Back at his grandmother's, they find she has returned to the hospital. Connor's father explains he's there until Friday due to limited holiday time for Americans. Connor, who clarifies he's not American, questions his father's visit, to which he responds that Connor's mother asked him to come. Upset, Connor begins wrecking his grandmother's living room, tearing apart the house, including the cherished clock. The monster, now in the living room, announces the start of the second tale. It illustrates a story set 150 years ago in a village filled with factories and an apothecary facing rejection of his traditional medicine in favor of modern alternatives. The parson's daughters fall ill, and the apothecary, despite the parson's prior disdain, is asked for help. The parson sacrifices his beliefs, offering the apothecary the yew tree. However, the apothecary refuses, leading to the daughter's deaths and the transformation of the yew tree into the monster. The monster emphasizes that the apothecary, despite flaws, was a healer, while the parson, in times of crisis, abandoned his beliefs. Connor, believing he is punishing the apothecary, destroys the parson's house in the story. Returning to his grandmother's living room, Connor realizes it wasn't just a tale, everything is smashed, including her clock. His grandmother returns home, horrified, and Connor fears punishment. That night, his grandmother weeps, and the next morning, Connor's father informs him about the living room, offering to drive him to school. Connor, 
wanting to go to the hospital, questions if he'll be punished, but his father sees no point. The following day at school, Connor experiences bullying again, though not physically assaulted. Subsequently, he visits the hospital where he overhears his sick and upset mother. Despite her attempts to conceal her condition, she explains to Connor that a new medicine derived from the yew tree, akin to the one in their backyard, may yield positive results. She reveals they could have used it earlier but refrained due to the connection they felt with the tree. During a walk with his father, Connor learns that his dad is returning to America, promising to be back in two weeks. Despite Connor's hope in the new medicine's efficacy, his father grimly points out that it's a last-ditch effort and may not save his mother. He emphasizes the unpredictable nature of stories. That night, at 12.07, Connor summons the monster in the garden, seeking assurance about his mother's recovery. The monster suggests the yew tree's healing power depends on whether his mother can be cured. Connor is reminded of a recurring nightmare where he clings to his mother's hands as she faces an abyss. The monster hints that Connor will soon reveal his truth. As days pass without the monster's visits, Connor continues to visit his ailing mother. At school, his bully decides to stop tormenting him, claiming invisibility is a worse fate. However, the bully maliciously spills orange juice on Connor's art book, featuring a drawing of his mother. The monster reappears at 1207, initiating the third tale about an invisible man who calls a monster to make himself seen. In a fit of rage, Connor attacks the bully. Facing consequences in the principal's office, Connor attributes the violence to the monster. The monster, however, reminds Connor that invisible men learn about challenges beyond being unseen. The principal refrains from immediate exclusion, emphasizing the futility of punishment. Later, Connor's visit to the hospital reveals his mother's deteriorating health. She confesses that the treatment isn't working, and there are no alternatives. Connor, feeling betrayed, accuses his mother of lying. She encourages him to express his anger and assures him that he knows what needs to be said without uttering it aloud. Connor asks his grandma to take him home, specifically to his house with the yew tree. In desperation, he runs to the graveyard, yelling for the monster. Blaming the monster for the failed promise of healing, Connor demands a solution. The monster explains that he came to heal Connor, not his mother, and introduces the fourth tale. In the dreamlike fourth tale, the hillside transforms into the familiar cliff from Connor's nightmare. His mother stands on the edge as a dark cloud materializes into a menacing monster. Connor struggles to prevent his mother from falling into the abyss, with the yew tree monster revealing it as the truth of Connor O'Malley. Ultimately, Connor finds himself back in the clearing, where the monster insists he must tell the truth to move forward. I know.